Good morning, Northwest. I'm Shaylee Derby, your announcement anchor. To start today's announcements, we're going to be doing the pledge. Please stand with me. Have your right hand on your heart and your left hand on your side. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And today I have a joke. It's, what did the left eye say to the right eye? Between you and me, something smells. Now I'm going to pass it on to Miss Stout. Have a great day. Bye. Good morning, Titans, and welcome back to another Think About It Thursday. I hope you guys have had a fantastic week, and I know that you've had a great time being in your virtual learning, and some of you are back on campus with us. Welcome. It's so good to see your faces. And those of you that are still virtual, it's still great to see you in the virtual environment and hear from you on the Think About It Thursday forum. So last week, I asked you what it was that you did to keep yourself mentally healthy, like what you did when you got stressed out or down or worried about things that are happening around you. And I got some fantastic answers. Um, we even had some answers from some teachers, and that makes me super happy because I love when our teachers participate in the Think About It Thursday. So without further ado, um, here are some of our uh, things that we heard. Shaylee in eighth grade said that something that she likes to do to calm me down is to read a book because she feels like she's in the story and it makes her forget about all the things around her. Um, right now she's reading Kisses from Katie. Uh, she also likes to draw and color. So that's something fun that she likes to do. Uh, Cortland in eighth grade likes to go on his patio on his lunch break and read for 30 minutes because that's something that he really enjoys doing, but he also loves being outside. And I know that sometimes getting in nature helps us kind of feel calmer and more relaxed. Um, Mrs. McKenzie agrees with Shaylee and Cortland and loves to find a comfortable place and a blanket and a book. Miss McKenzie says that when she starts reading, she becomes involved in the story and her anxiety melts away. I have to say, I really love that phrase because just imagining anxiety melting away sounds wonderful. Um, I myself love to read. I like to cozy up with a blanket next to a fire and and read with my nice cup of coffee, which I actually have right now. So um, that's one of my things to do too, to melt away anxiety. Um, we have some other fantastic uh, responses. Amelia in eighth grade enjoys sitting on her bed and coloring and listening to music. Um, she also mentioned petting her cats and dogs. And I have to imagine lots of us out there go rely on our pets to help us relieve some anxiety. There's actually studies that say um, petting an animal uh, will relieve anxiety and stress. And so that's why there are therapy dogs and service dogs that do just that. They, their job is to cuddle and let you pet them to help relieve anxiety. So excellent, Amelia, and I think that's a great way to relieve stress. Um, Jacob in eighth grade said, sometimes I cry myself to sleep, and when I wake up, I have released all of that stress. And I don't know when it became not okay to cry, but sometimes you do need to cry, and I think that's okay. Um, it, when we keep all that emotion bottled up, it tends to just explode at the worst time. So I think being real about how we feel and letting those emotions out when they need to come out is a good way to stay mentally healthy. And sometimes you just need to cry and that's okay. Uh, thank you for being honest about that, Jacob, because sometimes it's hard to admit that we just need to cry. So I appreciate your bravery and your honesty there. Kaylee said in eighth grade, said one thing I do to help my mental health is seeing my little brother and sister in Pennsylvania. She's not been able to see them physically in four months, but it makes her happy to see their smiling faces. So I'm hoping that you're FaceTiming with them or something where you can see them and talk. So that definitely seeing family, especially in a pandemic when it's hard like this, definitely helps lift spirits. So I think FaceTime and um, any other way to video call has really been helpful during this time. Logan in seventh grade said, I like to skateboard outside and relieve stress. I will say there's also studies that exercise and physical exertion relieves stress. So 
if you like to exercise or run or walk or play basketball or whatever it is that you like to do, that's also a great way to relieve stress and tension. So great job, Logan, for sharing that with us. Paige in seventh grade likes to journal. She has like 10 journals and every time she feels terrible, she writes in them and jots down anything that's annoying her. Um, I love that idea because sometimes when things are all in our head and we just can't stop thinking about the things that are bothering us and we just need to get them out and journaling is a good way to do that. You put them on the paper and you leave it on the paper and you can walk away. So great job, Paige. I think that's a good idea. Uh, Bryce in sixth grade said, I like to take deep breaths and try to get myself calm. That is definitely a strategy that works, taking calm, deep breathing. Um, I worked on, I helped my daughter because she has to get infusions and she was very scared of the needle. And the nurse talked to her about um, looking around the room when she's feeling very scared and like find three things that are blue and find two things that smell good or list five things that, um, you see that are green and it just gets your brain to focus on something other than what's bothering you and that tends to help you calm down as well so um great job Paige for sharing that um and I'm sorry that was Bryce and then Miss Murray in sixth grade said that she likes to listen to music and relax or even dance with the music now I have to say Miss Murray I think the students might like to see a video of you dancing with music um she likes to um, if she's driving though she likes to turn up really loud and drive to loud music and I have to say there's probably lots and lots of adults that do that same thing when we're driving we just crank up that music and sing even though it may sound terrible I for one do that myself I will not be singing for anyone though. <laughs> um, we have an anonymous sixth grader that says they like to run. So hopefully that sixth grader feels good about running because running is great. I can't run very far because I would be out of breath and fully out of shape. So that's awesome that you can run. They said my parents used to take me on runs to calm me down and that's a great way to get calm and release energy. Mr. Martin in eighth grade praised the rosary because it fills him with gratitude. So prayer is definitely a way to help you calm and recenter yourself and get your focus back where it needs to be. So thank you, Mr. Martin, for sharing that. And then Michaela, she's got a band that she likes to listen to, A-T-E-E-Z. I've not ever heard of that, but I think it's great that you have a favorite band or a favorite group or a favorite song even that you like to listen to when you're stressed out. Um, that is a lot of people that shared today and you guys did amazing. I think those are all great ways to calm down when you're stressed out. I'm so grateful for everyone that shared their thoughts and I hope that if you didn't, you at least got a thought that might help you calm down when you need it. So if you didn't share a thought, maybe you Maybe you heard something that might help you when you're stressed out, or if you're stressed out now, maybe you heard something that you could try today even to help you be less stressed. Um, today's question, I wanna talk to you a little bit about the inauguration that's happening this week. Um, the uh, President Trump is now going out of office and President Biden is coming in. So I want to ask the question that I want you to think about this week is what would be your first executive order? So let's say you were president and today was your inauguration day and you got in office. What's going to be your first executive order as president? Now, some of you may know what that is and some of you may not. So what is an executive order? It's exactly what it sounds like. It's an order produced by the president because he's the head of the executive branch. That's why it's called an executive order. And it's generally directed to and to govern the actions by government officials and agencies. So it's something that he puts out there to tell government agencies what to do. And it does have the force of law. Like it's something that he says, hey, I want you all to do this and they have to do it. So I read that Biden's first executive order in office is going to be to require masks for 100 days on all federal property. So his goal is to get this pandemic under control and slow this spread and finally make it to where we can maybe get back to life as usual because we really need to get rid of this pandemic so maybe you can all come back to school. Um, so that is what Biden's first executive order is supposed to be now. This is Tuesday, so he hasn't actually taken office yet. Um, that could change. That's just what the Internet said this morning. So maybe by this evening when he is the president, he might have changed his mind and do something different. But that was the information I could find this morning. So 
Your think about it Thursday question for today is, if you were president, what would your first executive order be? Now, typically presidents make sure their first executive order is something really notable because they want it to be something that's remembered and something that's positive. So think about it and then respond. What is your first executive order as president going to be? Think about it and I'll see you next Thursday.